Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. It was Poonam Mahajan who in 2014 uh, defeated you by a really fat margin of nearly 1.8 lakh yes. votes. Uh, so going back, where do you think uh, you know you fell short and how are you planning to campaign differently this time? I wouldn't compare the last election to this because 2014 was such a wave which really uh, took everyone by storm. And I think there was only one candidate in that election and that was Mr. Modi. Modi. Uh, this election, of course, uh, the campaigning style will be a little different. And uh, what I am doing is focusing on small meetings okay. in my area, really interactive, mm. you know, with the people and listening to them and saying my piece. Mm. So it's turning out to be really nice, mm. very interesting. Rather than big rallies. And no, yeah, yeah that yeah. you know, earlier we used to do padhyatras and we used to and not really meet the people. Mm. You know, they used to just see a glimpse and mm. we were we were gone. Right. just meeting people just right. meeting people you know it's it's a great way to get the mood and the feel of the people mm-hmm. on ground and what issues are you highlighting when you are going to the people and talking to them see my focus here is trying to tell the people that how important this election is to come out to vote number 1 to vote sensibly really take them through what has happened in these 5 years and how it has really affected them i speak but they speak too they really come out with their issues as to how they've been affected and how demonetization has affected them how gst has affected them so a lot of these issues which i get to know which i speak about also but uh, it's more interactive in the past 5 years what kind of representation do you think has punam mahajan provided to the people of the mumbai north central see i wouldn't want to really say that i go to the people and uh, i just see anger and i feel their uh, dismay really you know that they have not been heard their problems have not been addressed So although you were very active on the social front but over the past 2 3 years you kind of withdrew yourself from active politicking Politics, yeah. right and uh, so now that you are contesting again uh, is that turning out to be a hurdle reconnecting with the uh, on the political side with your uh, constituency you know i've never reconnected with my constituency on a political front i have always been very accessible and i always explain to them that you know as a member of parliament i will not be able to reach out everywhere i am accessible my office is there the workers are there anything you need you should be able to kind of so we had a great uh, system in place right. and i always connected with them on a social front not as a political because i felt yes they vote vote for me because their needs should be heard i should be able to f- address their issues and there were a lot of these issues which came to me housing was a big issue in my constituency still is mm-hmm. and sra projects you know people living on government land and their rehabilitation so there are a lot of these issues which we were addressing mm-hmm. see i never did anything in isolation right i always went to people saying i need you mm-hmm. and i am there to fil- facilitate anything but i need you to be there okay. you know i need your voices mm-hmm. to be heard i will be in the forefront mm-hmm. but you have to be there with right. me and you're talking not only people in the slums mm-hmm. i'm talking about people even living in the west right. where their buildings and their societies yeah, like and metro, metro project projects project, yes yeah. so i always took the citizens mm-hmm. uh, into consideration whereas we became partners in anything that had mm-hmm. to be done we put in our funds and everything but who oversaw it were the citizens the who took it over and started maintaining it were the people when the citizens came to us saying that this is going to affect our lives and we wanted to go underground we had many meetings when i remember the last meeting we had with prithviraj chavan who was the cm with all the citizens where we showed a big project to them the presentation and he agreed said that the gr will be released right. and passed and we will see to it that it goes underground okay. and then we lost the election right. a lot of work that had been done where we were pursuing it to be done but it has then it all stalled because of the elections right. and i see nothing has moved forward also unfortunately there is always this comparison in political dynasties where you yeah. know i'm sure people would be comparing you sure, to your yeah. father yeah. and uh, one thing that uh, is said very often is that uh, mr sunil dat w- became a leader of a national stature so even yeah. his padayatra to amritsar yeah. and so yeah. on whereas you so far have always been associated with this constituency so uh, how do you respond to that and do you have ambitions to grow as a national leader no i don't i feel you know i first of all uh, have always followed on my footsteps of my father but i work very differently okay. i feel i my connect nationally is more through my social work through my nargis that foundation where i look at myself as a person who is nationally connected maybe not as a political leader but someone who is reaching out to people in need i think one of the big reasons where i stepped back mm. 
from politics because that was my Nargizat Foundation was giving me that that satisfaction, that satisfaction of of representing yeah. anywhere in the country. We've been working in various states from Assam to Bihar to Adharwad. Our project was going on Kashmir, where we did a three day med- medical camp there and gave equipment. You know, it was like my reach was everywhere. Right. You know, people got to know, and it's not promoting me. Mm-hmm. It is promoting the foundation and the cause right. the foundation stands for. You decided earlier this year not to contest elections. What were the reasons uh, behind this? This was one of the big reasons was the Narkizat Foundation. A year, year and a half back, I decided I will take a back seat from electoral politics. Okay. I would work for the party and I always told the party, I said, you know, I want to, I want to kind of work beyond my constituency. Mm-hmm. In the two terms, when I was member of parliament, I was not able to do too much traveling or not able to really reach out Mm -hmm. because my kids were really young at that time. I was pregnant when I fought my first election (laughs) and then in the in the next uh, you know 10 years of my this thing I had my second baby. I had restrained myself from uh, moving around too much. I knew that my constituency was important. Mm -hmm my uh, parliament was important and this is all I could handle because I had Delhi and Mumbai and my kids and this I couldn't go beyond that and once I lost the election it gave me like more time Mm -hmm. to do things which I felt I I love doing Mm -hmm. and that's when I got uh, really focused on Nargisad Foundation and I started working diligently on to expand that but at the same time, you know, after meeting Rahul Gandhi, after seeing his commitment that he was going beyond politics on this. He was doing this not for the party alone, not for himself. He was doing this for the country because it that was the need of the hour. We all felt it. You know, when we used to sit and talk, my husband and me used to say, like, look at what is happening today. So with all that pressure and the push and even the people in the constituency and our workers and everything I decided you know like people like us who believe in our constitution who believe in our democracy and who really believe in a united India you know a a progressive India have to take a stand yeah but do you see yourself contesting another election or would you like to take a step back in the long run right now I do not want to say say anything because I think every time I've planned anything in my life has never, it has not worked and it has happened to me for very long. With regards to the Mumbai Congress, uh, you know, one thing, there's been a familiar enemy called infighting which has always kind of dented its chances, be it in the Lok Sabha election, the Assembly election, the 2017 BMC election. So how is this election likely to be different in that uh, sense? See, right now I think everything is sorted out. Everybody is together, everybody is kind of helping each other. And we all know and understand how important this election is. I think everyone's focus is really supporting each other in in this election so that we get maximum seats. Has uh, the AICC's decision to put Milindevra in charge and uh, uh, remove Sanjay Nirupam from the post, is that likely to happen? I think it was a very sensible decision because at, at a time everybody is happy. Sanjay Nirupam is fighting the seat he always wanted to fight. Milindevra is a very amiable face everybody is supportive of him and i think he will take everybody together it's a very wonderful balance as well as he's fighting that election he will be able to focus on mrcc as well but this was a demand that uh, certain members of the congress party have been were making since several months and the decision came very close just a fortnight before election so i think the decision came because people were complaining and things like that it was a very informed decision and they took this decision keeping in mind how beneficial it will be for everyone and like I said that everybody was well adjusted you know it was not done in a in in any sort of way whereas everybody knew also that Sanjayji was not going to be able to give so much time he would not even be able to get out of his constituency it is a tough constituency and uh, so yeah so I think all these keeping in mind uh, put together were taken there so one thing that uh, is often said is under the Modi government, the uh, minorities have been even more marginalized. There's a large section of uh, this the minority population in your constituency. What is the feedback that you are getting? See, what this government tried to do is to polarize, you know, but I wouldn't say only the minority. I think everybody, even the poor, you know, they have done nothing for the poorest of the poor. Then, of course, that polarizing in the name of religion, where you're trying to divide the city into all not the city the country 
in the name of religion being hindu or muslim or sikh or christians it's never happened but that is their politics you know we don't think that way we think differently we think on about development about how we can take people out of poverty you know where how can we give jobs to people and these are the things they had promised them they had won on the basis of this right. everything they said was lies and they everything they said lied about was because they wanted to win the selection but their agenda was completely different and that is what something people should now you know realize right. So the Modi wave is no longer as strong as it was. I don't see a Modi wave. I don't see it. They're they're pushing for that wave like crazy. I mean, we can see it's like in desperation trying to push that uh, everything from uh, Namo TV to uh, biopic to films to ads to this where you know it's like you're being brainwashed with just that one person. So yeah, these uh, things are happening. Yeah. I but I don't see a wave. <laughs> All right, and we'll end on that note. Thank you so much for talking to us. I'm Mansi Fadke, associate editor with the Print. Keep uh, tuned in to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.